Right, we're almost done with our dungeon. I'm going to do a couple of bonus episodes here where we can, you know, maybe cut up some of the tiles on the floor here and tip them so that they look all kind of, you know, not quite so perfect. We can go into the sculpting mode on the stairs and kind of wear those down a little bit. That's a lot of fun. I'll show you how to make some grates and window uh, panes really quickly here so we can bring in some ivy and let it kind of dangle down. Maybe we can even take the render into Photoshop and tweak with it a little bit further. But the one thing we have to do still that's that's pretty basic that we have not really touched on yet even though we've done a lot of, bit of the, a lot of the modeling here oh and you notice that between the videos here i went ahead and you know got rid of a few more of the columns like we were doing in the last one um, but i want to just uh, remember to tell you that i'm going to select the arches here and i'm going to go over here into the uv editing and i just made the scale of this a little bit bigger remember you do that by Having it selected in edit mode, I'm going to hit the A key to select everything. Go over here to this little window, hit the S key, and then just scale it up a little bit. I think in the couple last couple of videos, I had it zoomed way in, and it was a little bit more kind of Dalmatian looking. It didn't quite look quite, you know, how I wanted it to. So I just brought the scale back down again, uh, made it a little bit smaller. And then the other thing that's really important to remember is on the shading tab, I'm going to go over to the shading tab with the arches selected so that I get the right material down over here. I mean, you can always switch to different materials here, but we have the arches selected automatically because um, I have this object selected. Something I, I wanted to make sure that you were aware of that this little button down here that I might not have talked about before, color space, you want it to be RGB for just the image. That's just the picture that's on here, the image that's going into the base color. So that should be RGB. But if you were if you brought in the normal map, which is an op optional thing that you might have downloaded and added the normal map to this, you do want to switch this to non-color. It looks a little weird if you use uh, the sRGB. So if you switch this to non-color, this normal map translator here can read that a lot better. So the kind of the bumpiness that we get on the surface there um, just makes a lot more sense. It doesn't have that kind of weird polka dot looking thing. So I noticed that in the last couple of videos, it's like, what's happened with that? And I realized oh, I need to go back in and check a few of these. All right, just so that we are on the same page uh, so that your uh, image looks the same as mine or close to it. Um, the thing that's really missing right now is any discussion about lighting. So I'm gonna go from the material preview mode here, which is like all the lights on super evenly everywhere. There's no shadows. It's really, you know, it looks pretty harsh. So I'm going to click over here to the actual viewport shading render preview mode here, which makes it look like roughly what it's going to look like when we go to render the image out. So that's a little bit better. It's kind of dark. Um, it's a little hard to kind of see things. I'm going to just deselect the arches there. One of the things that we need to do is find where is this default light? I've got the, the light that was just in the scene to begin with. So I'm just going to scooch around and it's over here somewhere. There it is. Yeah, if you can't find it, just click on it here in the list in the outliner. That's kind of where I pushed it out of the way, way back at the beginning. And I'm just going to use the uh, the move gizmo here to kind of put it over here. Maybe I'll jump into top view. Yeah, I want to move it up here to uh, to where it's above the stairs. I'm going to pull that down a little bit and scooch that up over there. And let's take a look at that through the camera and hit the home button to fill the screen. And it's a little high. Let me pull that down a little bit. And you can see what that's doing to the shadows as, as it's you know, raising and lowering it. You put it down below and get some cool effects, whatever. You get a chance to kind of be the lighting designer for a little while. And I'm gonna pull it outward a little bit to where I catch a little bit of light on this vertical face over here. So it really pulls the steps out. Right now it's just like, this is just kind of a dark blob. But if I scooch it over a little bit, then suddenly wham, you can really see the stairs coming down. You could also pull it forward and throw some light onto the steps. This is where you get to really kind of play and see like well what do you think looks best just kind of move it around and we can also change its color and intensity so we'll just drop it there for now as if somebody was standing at the top of the stairs holding a lantern like you've been seeing at the beginning of every one of these videos um, but when this light is selected in object mode we get another one of these little green buttons that only appears this the same thing for camera too remember if you select your camera you can go in and change things about the camera so click on the little green light bulb there when you have your light selected in object mode and you'll see that you get some things like color and power. So we can click on this little swatch right here, the white swatch, and I'm just gonna take it and pull this little dot down a little bit to where it's going a little bit into the ambers in there. You could move it into magentas or blues or whatever. You can get really saturated with it, have fun with that. But I'm just gonna pull it a little bit down toward that kind of ambery so it looks a little bit more like sort of a natural like flame light or something like that as opposed to that bright, bright white light. Also, it's defaulted to 1,000 watts, and you can come in here and just type in 2,000. I'm gonna hit enter to just double the intensity of that. And again, you might wanna pull that down a little bit. You can scrub through here, and you can use the arrows, but when you get these like really big numbers, it takes a long time to kind of manually scrub through it. I think it's just faster to click in there and type in a number, just make it 1,500 watts or 
3000 watts or whatever, you know, and you can mess with that. Um, now the shadows are on by default. If we turn off the shadows, we get some sort of weird effects. We definitely want to have the shadows on there. And I would really encourage you to play around with this a little bit and see what all the rest of these do. I don't want to take time now and explain what all these are. Not too much going on with just a plain old point light, but we're already looking a little bit better. Our scene's got something going on now to where we've got some um, some kind of light happening there in, in a dramatic position. But let's add a new light to our scene. So I'm in object mode. So even with this light selected, I can hit control a to add a light so i'm just adding instead of adding a mesh like we've been doing all along here i'm going to come down here and add a light so i'm going to go to, to light and know that we can add another point light that's great we can add a sunlight the sunlight is great for outdoor scenes when you just want kind of like a big wash of light all coming from the same direction you can click on that and that's um, easy to put and then you can put it anywhere in your scene it doesn't matter because it's it's like infinitely far away rays uh, a spotlight is what we're going to add now and that behaves a lot like a, a light that you'd see in a theater or on a film set an area light is great for like mimicking the idea of like a soft box in a photographer studio or whatever. It just basically creates a plane, a surface that is giving off light. There's a fifth way that you can add lights to a scene too, and that is by adding an emissive material to an object. So you could create like a sphere in your scene if you want like a glowing like street lamp or something like that. You could create a sphere, then you could put a material on it and give it an emissive shader and then set its glow to something really bright. And that will actually light the scene as well. So that's a, four, a fifth way basically of adding light to a scene. But we're going to add the spotlight right now just by selecting it from the list. And you can see it's down here on the zero plane. It's at the world axis. So I need to pull it way up in the air, first of all. And you can see as I'm pulling it up here, I'm getting this like cone of light. That's basically the default uh, width angle, beam and field angle of that light. So maybe if I just jump into the top view here is the easiest thing to do to kind of move it over here. I'm just going to position it kind of right between this little set of arches shining down at the stairs. Back into the camera view. We'll take a look at that. And you can see like, okay, well, I can kind of see where the light's supposed to be, but I don't see a lot of action happening here. Well, for some reason, the spotlights are defaulting at 10 watts. So like it's like a night light, you know, it's like barely on. So in order to really brighten up this scene here, we need to go ahead and type this up to I'll just do a thousand and we'll see what a thousand looks like. Okay, now we're getting some light there on the scene. And I want to get the sense that this is the suggestion of some kind of moonlight. So I'm going to pick a kind of a tealy blue color up over here. Again, you can play around with whatever you think, make it a little more green, make it, you know, whatever. It's up to you. You could be the, the lighting designer. Also know, too, that this radius here, well, actually, not the radius, I'm sorry, it's the size down over here. Right now, it's up to 45 degrees, but you can widen it out. It's like going from a, you know, 36-degree floodlight to a 26 to a 19-degree, you know, that kind of thing. Also, if we have the beam really tight, let me make it fairly tight here on the stairs so you can see what this blend is. So blend goes from, like, a hard edge spotlight, you know, it's kind of like running the, the barrel on a stage light. We can make it very, very sharp, like a light on a stage floor or whatever, or we can blend it if we make this up, you know, blend it over here this little gap between the two circles is is the fall off between 100% intensity to zero. So it's a little hard to see when it's that small like that. But if you want the light to be very soft, you don't want to have a real hard edge to the light, then push that blend way up and then you can sharpen it or uh, soften it by sort of running that down over here. Also, shadows are on by, for, with this by default too, but sometimes that's, you know, like maybe that's actually good that you don't have the shadows on for that one. You can, you know, not, we sort of assume that shadows are always good, but there are times when you don't want that. Um, the other thing that's nice too is I can go back into the top view now with my little light here and I can do something like Shift D and just move and uh, now I've got another light here. Maybe I'll do Shift D and I'm maybe even add a third light. Let's go back and see what that looks like. And that kind of brightens up the whole scene back over there. Nailed it. So go ahead and play with some lights into your scene, and that's going to all help make it look a little bit more realistic. And then when you're ready, you can come back in here. Let me just deselect all the lights here. Let's turn off the overlays. So we're looking at something that's kind of like what our scene's going to look like when we go out to render it. It looks a little bright to me now, but you might be okay with that. You know, you can play around with, with different results. I'm going to go over here to the camera here, to our render backdrop here, and just know that it, maybe if you have a fairly fast computer, you know, go ahead and switch over to Cycles and, and give that a second, kind of see what Cycles is going to look like. Things are always going to look better in Cycles. It's just a better rendering engine, but it's going to take a lot longer. You can see it's slowly resolving here on the screen. And I'm here in the background, my uh, computer's fan has kicked in a little bit there because it is it is using some um, uh, processes and power to do that. You can switch over here to uh, GPU compute. If you have a graphics processing unit, you can do that. Um, and there's a lot more here with cycles that I'm not going to go into right now, but I'm just going to go back to EV and we can check a few things like ambient occlusion. You might remember that from the beach tutorial if you've watched that one already. That's just kind of putting in these little kind of cavity shadows all over this place. That's giving it a little bit more depth and you can control how dark and how deep those are um, by 
highlight that little drop down. Bloom will give you the sense of like, if I turn on that bloom here, it gives this kind of fuzzy blurry glow around things. And even down here in this little hot spot reflect, reflection in the floor right over there, you can see that there's that little bit of gloom here. I'll just toggle it on and off. That's really great if you have a light in your scene. And that's great too if you add some like ambient light, some fog. Um, that's something else I'll show you in one of the bonus uh, videos, how you can add things like air, you know, fog to a scene, that kind of thing. Um, but bloom is kind of fun to do. We'll cover depth of field in, in a bonus one as well. So you can have things in the foreground be blurry and things in, you know, in, in where you want your focus to be, be in, in focus like it's actually a camera. One thing you might also want to turn on is the uh, screen space reflections. That's a good one that just makes bounces look a little bit better. Those are a couple of things that you can do really quickly by just ticking a few of these little boxes. And the one thing, oh, it's already set really high here. By default, you're going to see this is set to 512. If you have a decent computer that can kind of handle it, I highly recommend coming in here to your shadows and just going from the default to as pretty much as high as you can get it. So 2048 does a pretty good job. That's just going to make the shadows like render a lot smoother. So the, the scale of the shadow will be, you know, really, really kind of jaggedy and sawtooth looking if you have it really low. But if you raise that number up, and this you can do the same thing with the cascade as well, you can raise those numbers up and that'll just kind of really make the shadows look, look a lot softer. Um, and you can also deselect those soft shadows too. If you don't want that kind of soft, soft sort of blurry edge, maybe you're trying to get the sense of very hard, you know, film noir kind of hard shadows or whatever, you can turn off the soft shadows and get these real crisp edges to your shadows as well. It's up to you. So a lot more to do. And there's tons you can do. You can bake all this stuff ahead of time so you don't have to render it each time. There's all kinds of things that you can do inside the lighting. But already that's looking so much better. And if I just hit F12 just here in the EV rendering engine, like there you go. We're kind of done. We could kind of take that and run with it. Take that into Photoshop and do some, you know, overlay painting on top of that. You know, correct a few little things, add some more details, add some, some junk on the ground here, whatever. That's really a great start for any kind of paint over. So that's kind of the end of the main major tutorial here. And I'll do a couple more talking about the fogs and the sculpting and the whatever as kind of bonus content. So thanks a lot.